first on the Western Slope. You're watching KREX 5 News at 6 p.m. Good evening and thanks for watching KREX 5 News this Saturday evening. I'm Chance Sticklin. Glad you could spend a part of your weekend with us. Today marks day four of the fall season, a tradition spanning more than a century here on the Western Slope. The Fruit of Fall Festival wrapped up day two today. A whole host of things for the community members to indulge in. And KREX 5's Austin Sack had a chance to catch all the action. He joins us live in the studio to give us the latest on all the festivities. Austin, what can you tell us? Thanks, Chance. Like many other events, COVID-19 canceled the Fruit of Fall Festival in 2020. This year, the festival brought lots of energy and excitement back to Fruita. With the end of the summer season, the 106th annual Fruit of Fall Fest returns to the Western Slope. The two-day festival features a variety of local vendors, plenty of food to munch on, and booths sponsored by many Fruita-based organizations. But the Fall Fest could not begin without the Fruita Monument High School Homecoming Parade. We did walk in the parade and we were clapping to music and just waving to everyone. It was so awesome to see everyone come and support all the different Fruita organizations. One Fruita group, the Shelley Elementary Parent Teacher Organization, is full of joy that the Fruita Fall Fest is back and took this as an opportunity to meet their neighbors. Um, it's been incredible to get to know other family members and just being here together has been probably the, the biggest highlight. Um, of doing the Fruit of Fall Fest. Those in attendance could take part in many events at sponsored booths that support fruit organizations, and you may even get a new look. We're offering face painting for $5 um, because it's, well, we do have somebody who's pretty awesome that is volunteering with us, but the rest of us are pretty much amateur moms who are just trying it out. From face paintings to supporting the local schools in Fruita, there was something for everyone to enjoy. It just feels awesome to be back and being able to dance for our community because they, they just love us. Yeah. <laughs> and we love our community. We just love being able to perform out there again. Although the event wraps up tomorrow, there's still plenty of action scheduled for tonight. From 4 to 8 p.m., you can head over to Elm Street in Fruita to check out a variety of local art. Reporting live in the studio and first on the Western Slope, I'm Austin Sack, KREX 5 News. Chance? Austin, thank you. A trip to the bowling alley, maybe even a shot to knock down all 10 of those pins that everyone always wants to. The Special Olympics Colorado Western Region Bowling Tournament was in full swing today. This year's event sponsored by Western Slope Audio, Audio and Mountain West Insurance saw participants from all ages. The event took place at Orchard Mason Lanes. A total of 10 teams and 100 athletes from Grand Junction, Delta, Montrose, Glenwood and Aspen all took part in the fun. The goal this year is to raise $500 so far. The total was up to $86 earlier. Organizers say sports is always a way to showcase the talent of athletes of all abilities. We have some really great athletes and like today with the bowling tournament or any of the sports that they participate in, we use this as a platform. We use sports as a platform to let them shine and show what their athletic ability is. The Special Olympics Bowling Tournament was an opportunity for athletes of all abilities to try a new sport and receive support from the local community. Wildfire season may be coming to an end, but it's not over yet. In preparation for natural disasters, the Colorado Wildland Fire Conference is looking to the past. And this past week in Grand Junction, wildfire, wildfire experts met to discuss the Cameron Peak Fire, a devastating event that torched over 200,000 acres last year. And Carrie X5's Austin Sack attended the conference this week and tells us how experts are preparing for future fire seasons. Colorado is no stranger of the impacts wildfires have on the state. In 2020, the Cameron Peak Fire and Pine Gulch Fire set the standards for some of the most destructive disasters. After a year with Colorado's three largest wildfires in history, fire experts are doing their best to prepare for future wildfires. We need, as a, a region, or I guess statewide and across the West, um, more work on um, pre-fire mitigation work, so thinning, prescribed burns, things like that, so that we can actually try to prevent some of these devastating wildfires that we've seen. Mulching is one method of fire recovery that helps provide moisture and stability to burn scars. We have learned that mulching is the most effective widespread mitigation technique. So the more of that that we can do, the better. Mulching has proven to be effective in helping fire recovery acts and has other fire experts looking to local companies like Aspen Wood Products to prevent future wildfires. Our products are specifically designed to help 
prevent those those massive erosion events um, or help at least reduce when they do happen, the big rains. Every fire is a little different depending on how intensely it burns and what kind of terrain it burns in can affect which fire mitigation techniques can be used. The Grizzly Creek burn scar, for example, rests on an extremely high slope, making mulching ineffective. Did some evaluations early about, you know, would reseeding, would, um, would mulching work or, or, or help? And in most areas, we determined that it really wouldn't um, on this particular fire, Grizzly Creek. Now that mulching is out of the picture, Grizzly Creek burn scar experts have conducted a preliminary debris flow prediction model to best prepare for future mudslides. With students back in the class from across the western slope, educators say ensuring kids have the proper nutrition is most important. District 51 officials have announced the availability of the free meals for the school year. Administrators say all students in the district are eligible for free school breakfast and lunches. This is the second consecutive year that the U.S. Department of Agriculture is offering to help feed more students. Even students who are learning remotely can still pick up meals in any D51 cafeteria. One district official says school meals are sometimes the healthiest meal that children between the ages of 5 and 18 receive. We've noticed an uptick in the amount of students that are receiving the meals and it's a healthier meal. More than half the students in this community are at or near the federal poverty guidelines. And so this is a big important part of providing food for them that they might not be receiving at home. No meal application is needed to qualify this year, but families who do choose to fill out an application are eligible for waivers of athletic fees, testing fees, and bus passes, as well as utility discounts. For more information, visit d51schools.org and click on the yellow school menus button. Well, for the first time in 45 years, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, for people facing food insecurity is seeing a price increase. Families and individuals will start seeing the boost on October 1st. Carry X5's Rob Hagen breaks down all the details you need to know. More than 87 million in food benefits are issued in Colorado every month, helping more than 250,000 households and 499,000 individuals, according to the State Department of Human Services. And Taylor's applying for those benefits for the very first time. Live alone, and because of COVID, pay is a little unstable, so having food stamps would help me pay for food. On October 1st, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, will see a 21% increase in benefits after after the USDA reevaluated the Thrifty Food Plan, which includes factors like inflation and growing poverty levels. This cost adjustment marks the first time the plan has changed since it was introduced in 1975. We're expecting to see an average of $36.24 per person increase per month with this year's cost of living adjustment. Just as the doors open to the biggest boost to SNAP benefits in the program's history could be a loss of benefits to thousands of Coloradans when the pandemic related increase to SNAP benefits expires December 31st, closing the doors yet again. During this pandemic, we've been allowing all households to receive that maximum benefit as long as they're eligible regardless of what their household circumstances are. So de come December 31st, we'll just be going back to the normal calculations for allotment. It might be a little troublesome if I start to depend on it, but hopefully this allows me to get caught up enough where I'll be fine when it goes away. Coloradans currently participating in SNAP don't need to take any action and will see the new increase beginning in October. But for those not in the program struggling to feed themselves or their families, there's hope come October. Anybody out there who may have been ineligible for food assistance in the past, but they're still struggling with food insecurity, you know, come October 1, because the guidelines are changing, this would be a good time to reapply. Rob, thank you very much. Still to come on KREX 5 News at 6, your full weather forecast with Chris Knoll in sports. We'll be right back.